Okay, let's take a look at what's going on with Ethereum currency. Uh, I call it a currency because I consider the cryptocurrencies actually money. Um, so what's going on with Ethereum is something new that uh, they're going to bring out real soon. It's called the Serenity release. And it's going to introduce something called Casper. Uh, taken from the friendly ghost this is a new protocol uh, it's an adaptation of some of the principles of the ghost now ghost is an acronym for greedy heaviest observed subtree that's what it stands for greedy heaviest observed subtree and this is what Casper's all about it's a uh, protocol for proof of proof of work consensus and they're gonna move it into proof of stake so now, I, I worked with some of the earliest proof-of-stake coins uh, for quite a while when they first came out. One of them was uh, Pure Coin. Uh, it's a, it was a proof-of-stake coin uh, going way back. Uh, uh, a number of other ones I worked with uh, uh, that uh, I mined and, and worked with was... Uh, one of them was called uh, 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 Hobo Nickel, it was called, I believe. And then there's another one uh, called the Mint... Uh, a number of them I, I, I work with and uh, how they used to work was is uh, you would let your wallet uh, do the mining rather than use an actual miner your wallet would do the mining uh, it, by having an open node uh, by having a complete node on the network uh, this is gonna sounds like it's something similar but but now, anybody out there, uh, if I'm wrong about this, uh, if I'm reading something wrong into it, uh, correct me on it. But what I think this is, actually, is you're not going to be allowed to do a proof of stake uh, with this new release of Serenity uh, unless you are bonded. And you have to be what's called a bonded validator. You're going to have to uh, become a bonded validator and you're going to have to place a security deposit in an action that the, that the, uh, that the, 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 the people that run this coin, uh, Ethereum, so that they validate you. In other words, what they're going to want you to do is they're going to want you to place a security deposit in an action that they're going to call bonding and then you're going to become like registered with them as a bonded validator for Ethereum. Now you have to ask yourself why would people do this? And why they're going to do it is it's going to be all about the money. Evidently you're not going to be able to uh, go on and mine Ethereum like you can mine Bitcoin and just be a, a, a not even nobody knows who you are in other words you're you've got a computer running say in your basement someplace you don't have to go in and tell them who you are pay a security deposit um, go through all the rigmarole and red paper and everything else and paperwork and everything else you can just start up a computer and start mining and validating the network but evidently, this is going to change big time with Ethereum. There'll be no more of you guys mining out there, Ethereum anymore, if I'm right. And I think I am. If I'm wrong, somebody tell me I'm wrong. But when they bring out this new, <clears throat> this new proof of stake called the Serenity release, it's going to be the end of your mining Ethereum that way. And you're going to have to mine it a different way, a whole new way. And the new way you're going to mine Ethereum is... You're going to have to join up with a certain amount of people that are going to be able to join in and they're going to have to be called bonded validators. They're going to have to place a security deposit with Ethereum, with the people who control Ethereum. And they're going to have to go through a process that they call bonding, a bonding process. Which is probably going to be, they're probably going to want to know who you are, where you're doing this, what you're doing it for, uh, how much of a deposit you're leaving, and it's probably, now I'm going to go out on a limb on this, but I, the way I see it is, this is a form of centralization. This is not uh, allowing the computers 
to completely do the job of, uh, of, of validating the currency the way Bitcoin works, which is decentralized. I see this as a form of centralization. Tell me if I'm wrong. Somebody out there. The fact that they're going to control the ones who are doing the mining. They're going to mine by proof of stake. Probably going to have a special wallet. They're going to have to be bonded and basically licensed with the people that run Ethereum. And approved of. In order to mine. And they're not going to mine the way by proof of work. They're going to mine by proof of stake. Now, am I right about that? <clears throat> it says the use of security deposits, addresses, and the nothing at stake problem that behaving badly is not expensive. There's something at stake. Uh, and bonded valid validators who misbehave in an objectively verifiable manner will lose it. In other words, they're going to have control over these bonded validators and if they misbehave it says if they misbehave in an objectively verifiable manner they will lose it they don't, they don't say lose what but I imagine they're gonna lose their coins or lose their per, or lose their their validation rights and what's gonna keep them validating these coins is money they're gonna make the ethereum these bonded validators and they're probably going to have to uh, a rather large security deposit. It says they're going to have to place a security deposit. Now I'm just going to go out on a limb on this a little bit. I'm going to say it's probably going to be at least a thousand Ethereums as a security deposit. I'm just guessing though. I don't know. I'm just guessing. But I'm suspicious. I'm suspicious that this is a way for the Ethereums, the, the, the runners of Ethereum, to make the first step in centralizing this currency. That's what I think. Because as soon as they switch over from proof of work to proof of stake, and then they get these uh, all these uh, bonded validators, they're, they're going to be hand-selected by them, then they have control over the protocol of the blockchain at that point. They have control over the validation of the of the of the uh, of the blockchain itself they have complete control then and uh, those uh, computers that these bonded validators are going to be running uh, can be hand selected and run by the by the uh, by the ethereum people it's they have control it gives them control I see this as a control mechanism this is what the way I see it now there is <clears throat> It would do a lot of things for them. It would help against uh, attacks of the network. It probably would. Yeah, sure it would. And uh, which they're which they're stating on here about that. And uh, it's also stating on here that uh, that it would increase the the block time uh, consensus could be increased. Uh, uh, see, they say. It's exponentially growing portions of the security deposits against blocks, thereby achieving maximum security very quickly. Sure it would. If they have control over all the validation, it's going to make their network an awful lot more secure. Sure it would, yeah. And uh, also at uh, the validation times for the blocks, it says that they'd be quicker. Uh, transaction finality, censorship resistance, uh more it says will there be more transactions per second it says most probably yes although this is due to the economics of casper rather than the, due to its blockchain architecture however casper's blockchain does allow for faster block times that is possible with proof of work consensus so gonna have faster block times that's because they're they're gonna have it under control they're gonna have a, a controlled uh um uh, uh this is this is more much more controlled this way having a, a control over the over the ones who are uh, who are uh, who who are can do the consensus on the coins this is the way i see it um so this is a new proof of stake protocol that they're planning to implement in the serenity release uh, i see this too a second thing about this is I don't see that this method that they're using 
has actually been tested before or implemented before and they're playing with a market like what is it a 33 34 billion dollar market right now and they're going to uh they're going to push through a protocol that's never been tested untested protocol um of course i think that they can test it on uh, what do they call it the test net the the new uh system that they have set up where they can uh, test it off the blockchain uh but still uh it's an awful lot of money to play with uh if something doesn't if something goes wrong or something doesn't work but i'll tell you what my instincts are on this what my instincts are telling me my instincts are telling me that this will work that this will work really good it'll work excellent that's what my instincts are telling me but it's going to give them i think it's going to give them an awful lot more control over over the coin itself uh, that's what I think. In other words, it's not going to be so much decentralized as it is now. This is going to give them uh, uh, control over validation of the of the network. Uh, see, very notably, a validator signature. Uh, so you have to be a validator to give the signature, and they want to uh, authenticate uh, with these currently bonded validators they can authentic authenticate this consensus uh, this is another way of saying control it gives them control a bonded validators who authentic authenticate the consensus in other words if you're not you're going to get it done by a bonded validator then you're not going to get you're not going to have your coin authenticated according to the consensus this is the way i'm reading it so it's all going to have to be done now the mining is going to be done proof of stake and it's all going to be done by bonded validators this is the way i'm reading it tell me if i'm wrong this is uh, this is what i get out of this and so uh this is a new uh, thing that they're bringing out for ethereum called casper the friendly ghost uh proof of stake pro proof of stake protocol uh, that's a uh it's called ghost greedy heaviest uh observed subtree and uh so i guess uh why they call it greediest heaviest uh, heavy as it has the most consensus and this would be the consensus that would be given it by the uh by the bonded validate validators so the bonded validators would like vote i guess and uh their their vote would uh would determine the heaviest observed subtree which would which would be the part of the chain that's going to make it through the through the the uh uh through the consensus protocol that's that's what what i see happening with this ghost greediest heaviest observed subtree now tell me if i'm wrong on any of this because i know there's a lot of programmers out there probably listening to me and uh i'm not a programmer you know, I'm just uh, sitting here trying to figure out what they're doing, what they're getting ready to do, as best I can, and uh, with this new proof of stake. And uh, so, uh, if I'm getting any of this stuff wrong, go ahead and tell me. I don't mind. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll uh, straighten it out uh, uh, or uh, in the comments section. So, uh, thank you very much for listening. Uh, like and subscribe. And uh, hey, we'll catch you in the next article. Bye.